Whether you're using disabled interrupts or mutex, you're solving concurrency problems by locking shared resources to avoid a race condition. That's great, but it brings with it some potential problems that you have to deal with. The general concept for the types of problems you see is blocking time. Blocking time is the period of time in which the CPU has locked up either by disabling interrupts or using a mutex that prevents other tasks from running because they're waiting for that shared resource. The simplest heuristic here is to minimize the time interrupts are disabled. And if you're not using mutexes, that's all you need to do. The issue is that the reason disabling interrupts works is it turns off the task switcher. And if you can't switch tasks, then you don't have a concurrency problem. But the time when the task switcher is disabled is blocking time because if you have a higher priority interrupt or higher priority task, it has to wait till you're done, even if you're a very low priority task that's disabled interrupts. And you might say, well, mutex is re-enable interrupts right away. Well, yes, but there's a problem. And the problem is that the higher priority tasks that might want that same variable are going to see the mutex is taken, and they're going to have to wait for the mutex to be released. So it's just like waiting for interrupts to be re-enabled, except it only affects the other task sharing the particular shared variable. The result in either case is priority inversion. Priority inversion is when a low priority task blocks high priority tasks by tying up the CPU or tying up a shared resource. So here's an example. In this case, time goes from left to right. We have a high priority task and a low priority task. And the low priority task is in the blue doing normal execution. In the orange, it's gotten hold of a mutex and set the mutex to true. And we call that entering a critical section when it has a critical shared resource. If the high priority task needs the mutex, it can start execution because it has high priority, but it'll sit there and say, oh, the mutex is taken and it won't be able to make progress. On a well-designed system, the high priority task will release the CPU to give the low priority task a chance to complete. The low priority task will finish its work with the mutex. It'll release the mutex, and then the high priority task will be able to run. And as soon as it runs, it gets the mutex because that's what it was waiting for. This is called bounded priority inversion. As long as you can guarantee the maximum length at which the low priority task needs the mutex, you know the high priority task will never be delayed more than that. But notice, even here, it is priority inversion because the high priority task has to wait for something with lower priority to complete. This particular type of priority inversion only involves tasks that actually use the mutex, not all tasks. So there might be a medium priority task or an even higher priority task. And as long as they don't touch the mutex, they're going to run just fine with their established priority. But there's a critical problem, and this picture is overly simplistic because it emits a special case that can cause the high priority task to have unbounded priority inversion, and we'll get to that on the next slide.